You're preparing for an exchange and I know how stressful it is. I'm gonna give you a crash course of everything I've learned from my exchange last year. Hi, my name is Sophia and I'm from Hong Kong. I went to Bocconi University for my exchange last year in fall 2022. Let's start off. Accommodations in Milan. Let me just give you one answer. Bought a home. Personally, I almost got scammed on Facebook. There was this deal too good to be true. Four ensuite bedrooms right next to my university. A five minute walk, 500 euros per person. If something looks too good to be true, it is too good to be true. So why use Spot a Home? Yeah, I'm not sponsored here. The pictures are clear. You know the place exists because they are verified and you can see reviews of the place. Other websites I've used include Idealista, but those are usually for long-term rents. Good luck getting a message from them and people don't usually respond to messages in English. Now, where do you live? I personally lived 15 minutes walk from Bocconi. Honestly, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't live that near school. Unless you're a very studious person, you're not going traveling to 10 other places then okay fine you can live near school what i would recommend is live somewhere near a subway station any subway station would do ideally maybe 10 to 20 stations away from your university's station use the map function to see where you want to stay so where my mouse is at now is near the Bocconi area near Ticinese. The rent 300 to 500 is actually for a shared room. Single rooms go for 800 to 1200. Now if you zoom out, you'll see red squares, which are the metro stations. Find any property near them. The prices are much cheaper. And if you like traveling, then you might consider staying near Cadorna station. It's three stations from Duomo right in the middle where the cathedral is. That's where you get the airport express and trains to other major cities in Italy as well. Rent wise, what is a reasonable amount? 500 to 800 range, we'll find something good here. I knew this one girl didn't even have an accommodation locked down when she landed. She ended up renting an entire flat for 2,500 euros. Now, do you wanna live with somebody? or live alone. I personally needed a lot of space because I create content, watch Netflix sometimes, or eat in my room. Live with somebody if you're very flexible. We had to share one shower, kitchen, drying rack. And so there was a lot of conflicts and clashes. Having a system really helps. You need to know whether it includes the utility bills. Even though Spot a Home charges an exorbitant amount of admin fee, platform fee, all types of fees, I think it's quite safe to go with them. But the thing is on Spot a Home, a lot of the listings are actually posted by large agencies. At the very end of your tenancy, they would come inspect your room. Now, what I would recommend is go take a video of every single corner in your room. If you see a spot, you take a picture of it, take a video of it. This is the room when I just moved in. So there's a spot on the wall, two spots on the wall here. Um, damage over there. Light is working. Mattress. The walls. I'd say I'm really happy with the room. I just can't wait to decorate it. One of my friends who rented from Spot a Home, she and her roommate were actually very clean people. There was nothing wrong with the house. My theory is because these people wanted to charge her extra, they took her to the trash area, a place where everybody in the building throws out their trash, not just her. And then they said the trash area is very messy and because management would charge us that cleaning fee, you guys need to pay us. 100 euros each. Now this sounds ridiculous because the trash area is shared by everybody in the building, not just her and her friend. They still insisted on getting this sum of money from my friend. At the end she paid and just wanted to get out of there. During my inspection period I was really scared. They actually wanted to charge me 15 euros for that one spot on the wall but I said that's not me. When the other girl left she said the mark was already there. I had to fight for it and if you guys encounter this situation please know your rights, know your contract contract and have that video in hand. They will look at the timestamp on your video and so have that ready. Make sure it's on the day you move in so you have room to argue. 
Buy a SIM card that covers as many countries as possible from your country. This one from 3 covers almost any European countries and maybe some other ones. I got it for 10 euros, which is around 80 Hong Kong dollars. Down to expenses. I personally spent around 2,000 euros per month. I know this is quite high on the budget and this is just for living in the city. I was just learning my way around budgeting. For rent, I spent 1,200 euros. Transport, I spent around 140 euros. I took the scooter to school three days a week. I wasn't really into walking. Scooter costs is actually quite expensive. Metro rides are two euros no matter where you go. So it could be one station, two station, or 20 stations. As long as it's within that one hour period, you can get something called the Metro card. A lot of people do this, but it's such a hassle. And you have to go to Duomo station to have that card done. So if you really want to do it, go at the very beginning of the semester. It's 20 euros a month for metros and trams. This is what a tram station looks like. They are much more convenient than the metro because there are places the metro doesn't reach. And sometimes I would take the taxi as well, so I put in 50 euros. And then for groceries, around 30 to 40 euros each time I bought chicken, bacon, cheese, pasta sauce, drinks, milk, tea, simple dishes that I can cook by myself. And I did my groceries around three times a week. I loved grocery shopping. Four weeks, I spent around 360 euros on groceries for entertainment and clubs. I only went clubbing a few times at the beginning of the semester. ESM Bocconi Group, they do have events for you every single day. And entry would be around 10 to 20 euros at the very nice clubs. If you are a nice out person, reserve 50 to 200 euros because there are a lot of events and you need to factor in the transportation costs back to your place. Eating out 35 euros to 40 each time. If I ate out five times a month, 175 euros. Last item on the in-city list monthly, 100 euros because sometimes I would be at museums, you need to pay the entrance fee or you want to watch movies, go hike somewhere you get equipment. That is around 2,000 euros. For traveling costs, another video. Now for the weather in Milan. I'm from Hong Kong and it's 30 degrees year round basically here it's humid it's hot sometimes it's 15 degrees winter and i think that's already freezing milan summers are hot and sunny for reference this is what people were wearing so have plenty of sunscreen water gelato and bring an umbrella winters are not that cold this is my last day in milan and i was wearing a sweater a puffer jacket a sleeveless one and a wool coat it ranges around 5 to 15 degrees and it sometimes rains. Just a simple wool coat. But then there are a lot of mosquitoes in the summer. I lived on the ground floor on Vea Codrono and I could just say it was the worst, worst thing ever to have your windows opened in the summer. There was no air conditioning. The first two weeks I slept with my window shut. I'd rather sweat to death than have mosquitoes bite me. The duvet I got from Primark was super thick. I basically had, I had one blanket in my entire exchange. 30 degrees, zero degrees, same blanket. Third week onward, I opened the windows, but I could just tell you how awful it is when the mosquitoes come at you and they buzz around your ear and then you cover yourself with your gigantic blanket but they are still in there somewhere and you cannot breathe. Get a place with air conditioning or get mosquito nets. Now, what exactly do you need to pack for exchange? Do you need to bring 70 or 90 kilograms of luggage with you? Please do not. Bring the least amount of things you could as possible. I had one suitcase when I went. I came back with two more suitcases. I packed a lot of clothes, but half of them I actually didn't wear. Let me just say in Milan, there is a lot to buy. Humana Vintage is a vintage chain store. There are around four to five in Milan itself. I went to Primark at least 20 times. Look at how cheap these shoes are. You need a sweater? Come here. You need a blanket, pillowcase? Come here. Sometimes you see whacked stuff. Yeah, people actually wear those. I had one backpack. One. I traveled to more than 10 countries in a backpack. Now, I'm not saying all at once, but maybe for one or two weeks, I survived out of this. What you need to do is bring more dresses, wrinkle-free, breathable, and super easy to wash. Because when you do your own laundry, you will know. I would have three of these kinds of dresses. Here is another dress I wore to Vienna. Flowy does not wrinkle, it dries super easily. Looks nice in pictures. Pack them at the very bottom of 
this bag. Now here's my toiletry bag. You only need one more jacket. For the cold, traveling should be as easy as possible. What do you need to bring to Milan? One thicker wool jacket and maybe one puffer jacket. And what I would recommend is for winter, have one of these fluffy jackets that you can wear at home. Wear this at home only. Lastly, things to do in Milan. If you are in a faith community, like me, I'm Christian, I go to church. I found Hillsong Church, bilingual church. It's Italian and English. I had a bunch of friends there, went to service. They have small groups meeting every Tuesday or Thursday. And if you're a fashion lover like me, then you will definitely love the plethora of vintage shops in Milan. They can range from 10 euros to 100 euros or maybe 500 euros if Dior jacket. Every third to fourth weekend in Milan, East Village is open. What is this place? It's the biggest vintage wholesale event that goes on and so many people go. Entry is five euros but inside you'll find records, you'll find drinks, you'll find accessories, jewelry, clothes, Polo Ralph Lauren, Burberry jackets, nice handbags as well and the prices are very nice. I went volunteering for their national food collection day. They would hand out bags to people coming in the supermarket. People walking in supermarkets would fill the bags with food they want to donate to the food bank and as volunteers we would help sort them and pack them. I know there's a hundred million ways you can use your exchange time but please go there really put yourself out there. I wish you a nice journey and please message me on Instagram if you have any more questions. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!